Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head to Iwati Kura Beer from Iwati Prefecture here in Japan and this is going to be a first for the channel. This is the first oyster stout that I'm ever reviewing for you on the channel here. Normally I stay away from this style of beer because I can't eat seafood generally. It gives me really bad stomach cramps. But I kind of thought with this one it's one of the best rated craft beers in Japan. I've never tried an oyster stout why not? We'll give it a go. So for this one, like I said, we're going to Iwati Kura beer and we're going to have a look at the Kakino stout, which comes in at 7% ABV. Like I said, it's an oyster stout and it was rated at 86 overall on rate beer, 83 within the style. So it should be a pretty nice one. And once again, it came highly rated from Koji at Asahiya Liquor Shop here in Taishibashi Maichi Osaka. Make sure you check out the Facebook link to his page in the description below. He's got a really nice selection of beers. If you check out the beer shop video that I did for him, you'll get an idea of what his shop looks like but make sure you check him out but anyway as is usual with my beer reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews from Iwati Kura beer I will add more in the near future there's all the usual social media make sure you check that out if you want to see more Japanese beer reviews go into the channel and search for Japan and they'll all pop up subscribe if you want to see more beer reviews as well and if you want to see another Japanese beer reviewer go and check out Casey and Eric's channel Sotogami Akihabira they've got some really nice videos and they have reviewed a couple from this brewery as well so make sure you check out their things all of the links like I say are in the description below but anyway to tell you a little bit about Iwati Kura beer so this company started brewing beer back in 1995 and of course this was a year after the tax laws changed in Japan to allow smaller craft breweries to open up there used to be a limit I think of it was two million litres or two million hectolitres or something like that on how much it was basically to limit how much you could brew a year essentially but it stopped a lot of little breweries opening up but like many craft breweries in Japan Iwati Kura actually find their roots in sake brewing and the brewery's parent company is Sekinoichi Shuzo which is now owned by Koki Sato who is the third generation of his family to own the brewery and they apparently produce some very nice sake as well so hopefully I can review some of those for you on the channel too but most of the data Today operations are actually done by his son Wataru and the brewery apparently is a bit of a cooperative brewery and they have five different companies backing it so within Japan and indeed within the world these guys are a very unique brewery. I've never heard of another company that is a sort of cooperative brewery like that in the kind of modern era of craft brewing. But the current brewer at the brewery is Niwa who joined the company back in 2009 taking over the main brewing duties from Wataru and he previously worked for Hakuseki Can and he was trained by an English brewery and he now has a real interest in Belgian beers and since joining the company he's added many new beers to the range which are now really quite highly decorated and the brewery also have an on-site restaurant which is in a beautiful kind of campus type building it looks like a sort of classical Japanese university so if you go on the brewery website you'll see the nice pictures of this campus it looks really beautiful so hopefully I can get up to Iwati Prefecture and have a look at this place at some point fairly soon but Iwati Kura like I mentioned to you they're based in Iwati Ken which was actually one of the areas that was affected by the earthquake in Japan back in 2011 and a lot of the brewery's equipment was damaged during the earthquake and for a long period the town actually had no food and uh, no electricity as well and apparently during this time the brewery and restaurant workers would meet on this little campus that they have and cook together over an open grill and a lot of people praise this brewery in Japanese craft beer circles for the fact that it's kind of treated as a family like the, the workers really do feel more like a family than colleagues and things so this is one of the real kind of appraisals that this brewery gets and it's always nice to read little things like that when you're doing beer reviews and stuff like this but just to list the other beers you can get from these guys then they have the Weizen, the Pale Ale, the Black Beer, Red Ale, IPA, the Passion Ale and also this guy the, Ka the Kura Stout which should be really quite nice they've also got a few seasonal beers as well and apparently they have a very interesting pepper beer so hopefully I can track that down for you at some point fairly soon so let's actually get stuck into this beer then this one should be really interesting as I mentioned to you it's a 7% oyster stout and it was actually brewed they have special oysters for this one it was fermented with oyster cells from San Rico Hirotawan which I think is one of the local oyster farms that they have there so it should be quite an interesting one I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork on this one before we open it up this is quite an interesting one the bottle cap on this one actually is a sort of you can see there it says Kura within the kanji so it's a really cool design that they have on this one and there you can see little drawings of the oysters 
on the waves with this. It's very nicely presented actually. I did appreciate that with the last one that I had. But there you can see, you can see it's basically it's Kaki no Kura Stout, I believe this one is called. And uh, you can see there in the katakana, Su Ta U To. So that's how you say stout in Japanese, Su Ta U To, I guess. So yeah, because you can't say all the sounds in Japanese, which is quite interesting. But let's get this guy open and we'll get on with the tasting here. So as you can see, a nice smoky opening on this one. And that smells quite interesting. Very first time I'm trying an oyster stout on the channel. Might have to be the last one actually, but we'll see how my stomach feels after this review. I don't know what it is that gives me the problems with seafood because I can eat it, I don't flare up or anything like that, but in the night usually I wake up with bad stomach pains and things and it's a shame because I've tried some beautiful Swedish smoked salmon and stuff like that and it tastes lovely but I just can't eat it. So it's a real shame. But as you can see this beer has poured a really nice ebony rosewood colour which is exactly what you would expect from a stout beer. There's a solid finger of a frothy kind of beigey tan head on this one. It's actually quite a dark beigey tan head that you're getting here. Some big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and quite a few little ones going up towards the bottom of the stout there but overall, overall it looks very very nice. So let's have a look at the aroma on this guy then. So it actually smells very sweet. On the nose it doesn't really smell that much different from a normal stout I guess you would say. There's nothing really that's giving me a distinct impression that this is an oyster stout. But it smells very nice. It's quite a sweet chocolatey aroma you're getting from this one. You can smell some of the kind of toasted brown sugar elements in there as well. You can get a little bit of the roasted kind of black malt backbone to this one, the little sort of coffee-ish aromas. You can pick up some of that. There's some toasted caramel, maybe treacle like I was saying. It really smells quite sweet, chocolatey and, and kind of caramelly, this one. But yeah, it really is just quite a sweet smelling stout this one. You could probably forgive I could probably forgive you for thinking this is a sort of chocolate or milk stout this one. It does smell very, very sweet. There's nothing to my mind that really makes this smell like an oyster stout. I was expecting a little bit of a kind of salty or kind of slightly seafoody note from this one. But overall, you know, just a chocolatey caramel, slightly black maltish toasted stout kind of thing from this one. Quite simple in the aroma, but it does smell nice, I'll give it that. So yeah, let's get stuck into this one then. This is the Kakino Stout from Iwate Kura Beer in Iwate in Japan. My very first oyster stout, 7% ABV. Let's get stuck in. Kampai. Yeah. You know, it's kind of interesting because all the other flavours in the beer really drown out any of the seafood element you get. There is an element of saltiness to this beer. You can taste that, that sort of typical. It's almost like if you have some of these um, Japanese foods like maybe umami or, uh, or udon and things like that, you just have that little kind of almost oily, slightly fishy tasting character to it. You can pick up a tiny, tiny little bit of that in this, but overall it's just kind of like any other sort of sweeter stout that I've had to be honest. Yeah, the body on this one's quite interesting as well. It's very smooth, kind of mid-bodied sort of thing. But it's really interesting, actually. So the middle of your palate's kind of blanketed with this sort of bready character. It's almost like a, a, like a brown bread. But on top of that, you've got a very smooth, kind of roasted black malt thing going on there. That's the kind of backbone or the linchpin of the beer, I guess you would say. So yeah, I like I say, there's that black malt character in there. It's not coffee, it's not big and roasted and bitter like you might expect. Maybe it's that kind of slightly oily black malty character that's the, the sort of trademark of the oyster stout if you like. But I feel that as it progresses into the aftertaste, that's when you get a little bit of this sort of um, kind of fishy seafoody oil coming out in the beer and you can feel that just sitting there in the middle of the tongue and some of the roasted slightly coffee-ish bitterness comes out a bit in the aftertaste it's it's not probably not coffee it's more just a kind of black malt character from this one so yeah it's interesting there's 
a good bit of sweet chocolate in there, some toasted caramel like I was saying. Just behind the front curve of the tongue, you can get a tiny little bit of red fruity ester, but that's very, very minimal in this one. That's a very, very subtle note. There's some earthy hop there at the back corners of the palate. As you come further forward, it smooths out. Perhaps it's a little bit grassy, but I think mainly it's a kind of earthy, hoppy character from this one. But it's really nice. You can pick up a little bit of that salty character, like I say, as you move into the aftertaste. But it's interesting for me. It doesn't taste that much different from other stouts I've had, but maybe I just need to tune my palate a little bit more to the style and then maybe I'll get used to it. But as I say, this might be the only one that I can review for you on the channel. Which would be a shame because it's actually it's actually quite a nice beer this one. But yeah. Apparently this is an old style that came from England that's kind of been revived recently with the craft beer movement. They used to put oyster shells in the brew. And it was, you know, maybe a couple of hundred years ago they used to do this a hundred, two hundred years ago. And it's a style that's really come to prominence again with the uh, the craft beer movement that's gone on. But it's it's really interesting. As I say, you have the real defining character, this one I guess is just that little bit of salty, slightly fishy character that comes out in the aftertaste, but overall, positive review from me for this one, so hopefully I can review more of this style in the future, hopefully it doesn't kill me, but um, in the with the mouthfeel this one, I'd say this is mid to full body, the carbonation is very smooth, it's actually quite oily I would say, which is interesting. Like I said, there's a little bit of a salty character to it, some earthy hop and some dryness, little bit of juicy fruity character and a nice smooth sort of sweetness to this one. It's really interesting. The malt base is a little bit dry, the earthy hops have a little bit of dryness too, but overall it's quite a smooth and almost silky mouthfeel you get to this one. Very nice. Mm. So yeah, that's my first ever oyster stout review for you on the channel. The Kaki no Stout from Iwate Kura Beer from Seki Noichi Shuzo really good sake company apparently so I need to review some of their sakes for you but yeah really cool to do my first first oyster stout review for on the channel hopefully the the thing that I have with seafood doesn't kill me after this one so we'll see how we get on with that but thank you once again for watching if you have tried this beer yourself please let me know your own thoughts on it in the comment section below until the next time please like subscribe share or the all the usual YouTube stuff let me know your favorite beers from this brewery and your own thoughts on this beer like I said until the next time slange just now and I will catch you soon make sure you go and check out Koji's beer store and also Casey and Eric's channel Sotogami Akihabira will return to Iwate Kura in the fairly near future I'm sure slange just now